How to get started with SMS text marketing as an independent music artist is what we're going to tackle with another special guest coming up right after this intro. Join me in my mission to help put at least 50,000 music artists on the right track to be independently successful with their music to turn the talent that they have with their voice into gold. My name is Billy Nellis and welcome to the Golden Voice Podcast. Boom! SMS text marketing. How to even get started with that? Well, I'm bringing on a special guest so that we can, you know, go over this with you. And uh, it's actually a friend of mine. Help me get the plaques that you see on the wall right here. We're actually friends. We met in person. And uh, at this point, we're actually business partners, right? Because we coach inside of, the, of a community of music producers. We have something in common, uh, which is geeking out on marketing a lot, all right? And he has not one, but two businesses that hit the million dollars in revenue. And that's definitely something that... I'm uh, looking forward to reaching, and that's somebody that I that I, that I look up to respectfully. All right. So, without further ado, let me bring on to the Golden Voice Podcast for the first time, my good friend Gabe Schillinger. That's How you doing, fun. brother? I'm good, man. I'm man. Thank you for having me on the podcast. I appreciate it. I almost forgot to put my headphones on. I had him right there. I, I still heard you. I was like, okay, something, something's wrong. With but anyways, cool. Um, real quickly for those that don't know you, I'd like to, for you to briefly introduce yourself, let them know yeah. who you are, where you're from and everything. And, uh, you know, a little bit of the inspiration that you can bring onto the golden voice podcast with your story, man. Yeah, man. No, I appreciate it. I always, I always love talking to you and, you know, we always geek out about all this, you know, music and marketing stuff and, um, so yeah, it's, it's always a good time, but so for me, um, I've got a production team called Legion Beats. So, um, I've been a producer and engineer for like 20 years now. And, um, you know, for me, I started off as a producer the way a lot of producers do kind of chasing placements and, you know, trying to get, um, uh, working with bigger and bigger artists. And I, I started working with some of the artists in the Bay area here, like, you know, E40 and Too Short and Messy Marv and Keek the Sneak and a bunch of people that, uh, if you're from the Bay, you know, and if you're not, you may or may not know. Um, and even, and even work my way up to working with, you know, some, some names, some big names outside the Bay and stuff too. But, um, I realized after like, I don't know, 10 plus years of this, I was still really struggling financially. And, uh, I thought it was about time to, you know, get a real job, so to speak, or, or shift what my main career was going to be and still do music for fun. I kind of lacked, like last, last thing I tried was selling beats online. And, uh, and I'm glad I did because it opened up my eyes to this whole new world of, uh, marketing and business that I never had any interest in. All, all I wanted to do, I just thought, okay, if I just stay in the studio, get better at my craft, eventually somebody's going to come save me. A, a record label is going to come write a check or the right manager is going to come along. I'm going to get that pub deal or what, you know, whatever it was. Um, uh, and, uh, but then when I started learning about, um, marketing and started actually getting into, it, I was like, wait, this stuff is actually kind of fun. Like, this is interesting. Started applying it to uh, my music, you know, to selling beats, started having some really good success, was able to, you know, eventually do a six-figure launch where we did, you know, $200,000 in sales in a week, which as you know, and people oh, yeah. know from selling beats is, man, it's hard to make any money. So that was like, okay, I started to realize, wow, I'm really onto something here. Um, was able to grow Legion Beats into a seven-figure company. And we've got a, you know, good-sized team now all across the world, which is pretty cool. And then uh, more recently started MIDI Money uh, along with you and yes, Wish and, and uh, Anno Domini, uh, which is where we teach producers essentially how to do, you know, the same things that, uh, that we have done as well. And happy to say that's, you know, continue to grow. And we've got thousands of producers that have... Um, learned about that and and for me it's it's about learning the information but also just learning to have fun with marketing and entrepreneurship and that's that's kind of the biggest message that i like to get across to creative people that you kind of need this stuff to be successful and i think most people know that um but the the message that i like to give is that it can actually be fun and you can use the same the same skill set and the same things that you like about music the creativity uh you know the energy the excitement the all that stuff um you can you can apply it to both your music and your your marketing and 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 business side of things and have a lot of fun and then actually also be able to make a living from your music. Right on, man. So inspiring, man. You know, th th there's one thing that I believe in that a lot of people may think is a little bit woo woo, but you know, I, I had a goal to really, you know, you know, come out the box, say to show 
other people that do the same thing with me, how to make a million dollars selling music online or selling beats online. And just by having that goal and to really, you know, focus on that, I was able to kind of attract you back on my path because, you know, we, we kind of came across each other online and stuff like that. But I, I never knew that it, it went to that level for you. And it was just such a, an inspiration and something that allowed me to, you know, learn some of your ways so that I can eventually get there as well. And it's crazy how you can attract things just by focusing on something specific that you want to achieve. Now, uh, something that we've been diving a lot deeper on and something that's been giving you a lot of, you know, results and success with your marketing is SMS text marketing, meaning, you know, using, you know, a lot of music artists may have heard email marketing, but now there's SMS text marketing where we're, we're sending messages directly to people's phones via a text message, right? Mm -hmm. Now, yeah. I want to give a few ideas to the independent artist community in terms of how they can get started with that and the strategies that they can use to implement so that they can promote their music with that. So let, let's dive into it, man. What, what are some of the ideas that they can implement right off the box? Yeah, for sure. Well, first, just to give like a little bit of context of, of why it's important is that uh, and I know you talk about this with with email marketing all the time, and I think it's a, a important message to get out there because a lot of times we we see the results maybe of people who we think were successful, and then we look at certain things and we think that's what means being successful. So, for example, we see okay, this person gets this many views or likes or comments or you know subscribers or whatever on on these various social media platforms, and we think that's what success is. Um, but you and I both know there's plenty of uh, times when the people who are getting the most views or uh, plays or subscribers are are not able to turn that into money. And the reality is if you really love music enough that you want to do it full time, you have to figure out how to make money doing it. And so um, so you have to find out, okay, well, what are the things that are, you know, really important? And, and what both you and I, I know have come back to time and time again is building your list, having that direct relationship uh, with your fans, your audience, your customers. Um, and so one great way to do that is email. I'm still big on email. I think it works. It's it's awesome. Uh, and then text messaging is another great version of that where it's uh, uh, in in combination of those two, I think it's really, really powerful. And it's just, it's kind of like, there's something a little bit more uh, intimate about it, right? Because it's mostly I'm texting my friends at this point, right? But email is like, you know, you open your inbox and there's 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 a lot of stuff and it's from different businesses and companies and I forgot I signed up for this or whatever. Um, so it becomes a lot more effective, right? Where the open rate on email is, is going to be lower, right? Um, maybe, you know, I'm happy if I send something out to my whole list of 20% open it. That's, you know, that's good. That's pretty yeah. good for me. Um, but if I send a text message, it's usually like 80%, 90% that are actually opening that. So it's pretty, it's pretty powerful. Um, and so, yeah, so, so that's the thing is it works really, really well. Um, one thing that I would say the flip side of that is because it works so well, you do have to be careful with it. So if you're an artist, you sign up for, you know, you're, you're going to want to use some software for this, right? You don't want to just like give people your phone number. Um, when you, when you start doing this, be careful about not texting them too often, right? Because it's like, you, you don't want to get a text message um, too often because it feels, it is more intimate, right? It is like something you do with your friends. So if they, if, if somebody signed up to your text message list, they, they signed up because they want to, but they're going to quickly get annoyed if you're texting them, you know, every day, for example. Um, so I find that the sweet spot is usually at the most about every week. Um, and probably about every couple weeks, um, it is going to be the most effective unless, um, they're signing up for something very specific, right? So maybe you're doing something, uh, creative with your fans, your audience. Um, you know, I don't know, maybe you're doing some kind of challenge, right? It's like a five day challenge for your, for your audience, something like that. Um, then they might be expecting to get a text message every day. You can automate that. And there's ways to just, you know, actually set that up the same way that you can set up your emails where it's automated. They sign up. Day one, they get this. Day two, they get this. Um, and even though that part's automated, you still want to respond, obviously, right? Because again, it is so intimate. Um, you should be responding to your emails too. But I think especially a text message, you get that text message from your friend. Uh, if you respond and they don't they don't respond back, you're like, you know, you're like a little offended. So you want to make sure that you're staying on top of that as well. Um, so there's a few little intricacies that that you have to be careful with. But all in all, it's, it's really, really powerful. It's worked really well for me um, you know, in, in promoting my music. 
Yeah, definitely. And even at, on on for this podcast, um, I have a keyword just to text podcast to six four seven two seven seven five one seven seven, and that allows you know the listeners to get notifications when I release new episodes. Right? It can be something as simple as that. And yep. for some music artists, it can be you know when you're on live stream and you want people to get your new single, you can you know, have them text single to your, you know, the numbers that you're going to set up for your SMS marketing. And that allows you to open the conversation in the back end to nurture them and to continuously uh, sending things that relates to your world and what you're doing with your music, right? So what, what are yeah. some of the ideas or, or some of the things that you think independent music artists can use to uh, start collecting phone numbers uh, for what they're doing with their marketing? Yeah. So you have to figure out, well, what, what is my audience going to be interested in or my potential audience or my fans going to be interested in? And I think that starts from getting clear on who you are as an artist. What's your message? What's your brand? What are you talking about? What's, what's the feeling that people come to you to get instead of coming to somebody else? Right. And so um, that's the first step is like figure out what, what is that thing? And sometimes it's a combination of, uh, you know, maybe you make more kind of party music or, it's more kind of emotional or whatever. And, and I know every every artist, every producer immediately has the same reaction. Oh, I'd make everything. It's like, that's fine. That's totally fine. But it, it's important to start with something, right? To have some specific reason for people to come to you because there's millions of artists out there, right? Just like there's millions of producers out there. Um, so you have to figure out what, what's that thing that people are going to come to me for. And sometimes it's even like another interest. Like you show, like you're interested in, I don't know, sports or fashion or, you know, it could be anything, right? right? Um, and so if you build your your community around those things, it gives you a chance to actually compete, right? If you try to be everything for everyone, now you're competing with the people who have, you know, millions of dollars and years and years of uh brand recognition behind them, it's gonna be really hard to do. But if you're if you find that that niche, right? What we call it in in the business world, your niche or maybe your genre in music or what your brand is about or what you're promoting. Um, and it's very specific, then people are going to come to you because they can only really get that very specific thing from you. So now once you've got that, now you just reverse engineer. Well, okay, how can I incentivize those people to want to give me their phone number or text, you know, this keyword to, to, to this number so that they can be on my list, right? Because that is, even though it's free, it's still, it still is a cost to them, right? It's right. if every time I answer my phone number, especially, uh, or my email address, it's like, okay. There's a cost here. There, there's a chance they might be spamming me. There's a chance that you know it's not going to be worth my time or whatever. Um, so you have to give them a reason, right? Um, and usually that's going to come from reverse engineering. Okay, what what am I about? What is the thing that people come to me for? And is there some some little taste of that I can give to them in exchange for um, for giving me their phone number or email address, right? So that's kind of like the bigger the bigger concept. Um, and then you just kind of figure out the specifics from there, right? Um, it, it can be as simple as like, hey, here's some exclusive content that you wouldn't get otherwise, right? Here's some kind of behind the scenes of, of my music. Uh, maybe it's, you know, behind the scenes of you creating that music or, you know, something like that that they can only get through through opting in. Um, and that's going to be really effective for the people who are already fans of your music, who already at least have heard your music and are interested in it. So that, mm -hmm. that'll get some people. Um, and then sometimes you might also want to think about, okay, well, how can I bring in new people and turn them into fans? And that's where it might be really, uh, advantageous to figure out, okay, like what, what is my angle? Um, or what is at least one of my angles of what people come to me for? Right. So like you're a producer, you make beats, but artists come to you because they know they're going to learn about marketing and entrepreneurship. They know they're going to, you know, they all, all the different things that you as a person are about. Um, they know they can come to you for those things, right? That's why ultimately they're going to end up getting those beats from you. It's it's yes, because they like your music, but it's also because they come to you for that thing, right? So perfect example, then you could say, hey, text, what, what's the number? Uh, text, uh, what, what would be the keyword? Because the number is 647-277-5177, but uh, we're, we're going to have a call to action to a tool that you can actually also use uh, to get started. But uh, it could be any keyword that you would text to, to my number, right? So, so right. that you can get some beats. Or for example, I have a keyword uh, on, on my uh, tool that I set up 
to get notifications when when I have new beats that come out. So you text the word beats to 647-277-5177. You opt in and then anytime I upload a new beat, you'll get a notification uh, right on your phone to check out the new beat that I uploaded on my beat store, for example. So yeah. There we go. So that's a perfect example, right? You know who your audience is for your music and you know that that's something that they're going to be interested in. So then you just kind of reverse engineer from there. So that, that to me is the whole, the whole key to it is, um, is figuring that out. And, and like I said, you can start with like, you know, behind the scenes content or exclusive content. Um, and that's going to be a great way to get the people who are already following you, maybe on social media, maybe you've already got an email list, um, and you want to get them over to that, that text message platform. Um, then that's, that's, that can be an easy way to start. Um, and then you can, you know, figure out from there, okay, what are we kind of about? What's our, what's our message? What, you know, and then you can give them information products like, oh, I've got a, you know, a video that, that specifically talks about this thing that, you know, you can only access through here. Or uh, like I mentioned before, you're doing a challenge. Those have become really um, popular these days because it's like a way to get some kind of result quickly. So like commonly they're like a five day challenge, right? So maybe as an artist, your whole thing is, um, you know, being, well, let's just stick with your, you know, your concept, what's like marketing and entrepreneurship. Okay, cool. So we're going to do a five day challenge for, well, this is going to get kind of meta, but like getting started with SMS marketing. Great. Right. So then that's how you get them to opt in. Right. Um, because that's the thing that they're interested in. And then ultimately it's going to lead back to your music, but you're connecting them, uh, with them on a deeper level, something that you're, um, your brand and your community is is about. Does that does that make sense? That yeah, definitely makes sense. And a few things that I want to circle back, and I'm gonna uh, share an idea that just came to mind right now is you know in marketing we always say if you market to everybody, you're marketing to nobody. So that's why it has to start with you. You have to be very specific on who you want to serve and the message that you're gonna put out there is gonna start to attract those people as you're gonna grow, right? So something that Gabe said, which is important as well, is figure out your niche. So basically figure out the lane that you're in with some of the things that you're interested in so that you can start to attract the same people, right? Like if I'm, you know, if, I, if, if, if anime is my thing, then, you know, if the message that you put out there relates to anime, you're going to start to attract some anime people. If your thing is cars, if your thing is motorcycles, if your thing is like cooking, it's, it's, there's something about you that when somebody talks to you and you say that thing, they're going to be like, oh yeah, you too. Well, man, this is awesome. Do you know about this? That like, it just sparks the, the conversation and it makes right. it all, I don't know, uh, uh, interesting, right? So you have something in common with that person and something that came to mind as an idea that you can use to also start to collect uh, some SMS text numbers that a lot of the people are interested in, into having the lyrics of a song for an artist, right? Nice. So people that are, you know, interested in your music, they, if you didn't release any sort of lyric video or something like that, you can release your, your, you know, the lyrics of a song that you're putting out there. And then in the back end of that, you can start to offer maybe songwriting services or, or share the tips that tips and tricks that you're using to write your songs and stuff like that. So th there's so many things that you can do. Uh, it's just thinking a little bit outside the box. You really identify some of the things that, you know, that is your power, your superpower, like your, the perk that you have when you're creating music and you start to find some people like, you know, I'm pretty positive that as a music artist, you also a fan of another music artist, right? So in your audience, in your fans, you're going to find, you know, some some music artists that are going to be fans of your music as well, eventually, as you're growing and everything. And you can definitely offer these kind of services so that uh, you can continue to grow with that and, and build a community around, you know, your superpower kind of thing, right? But does that, yeah. does that make sense, right? It does. It does. And that's a perfect, I love that example of like, yeah, a lyric video or something like, or no, sorry, not a lyric video, but like your, your lyrics. Um, yeah, yeah. It could it be just, like a PDF or the video, whatever good case maybe. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it really, it, it is going to come down to individually, like, what are you about? What's your community about? And then figure out how to go from there uh, and start simple, you know, maybe it is like the lyrics thing or, or it could be as simple as, Hey, here's, here's the behind the scenes of, you know, how I created the song or something like that. Um, and then you'll, what you'll find out is you'll get better at it. As you start to put those, those little, those little mini offers out there, um, you'll see which ones work and which ones don't. Um, and so that's where it is helpful to have some software where you can actually test these things. Right. right. And so the one that you and I both use is one called crowd connect, which we actually, uh, partnered with, with an engine, uh, a software company, um, to really, um, customize it for, uh, for musicians, you know, sort of made by musicians for musicians. 
And so that's that's the thing I've been using that you've been using where it's like if you if you look up, there's a million SMS you know services out there. Um, you'll see most of them, they'll say like, OK, at this tier, you can use like one keyword. So like you mentioned, like beats or lyrics or, you know, whatever, whatever the keyword is, text this right. um, with this one. One of the things I liked is that it's it's in, like you can literally have as many keywords as you want. You can have as many contexts as you want. Um, there's none of those those kinds of limitations. It's just how much you use it. So if you send out the text messages, that's the only thing that really costs. Everything else is just, you know, use as many keywords you can set up. You can get very creative with the automations. We could geek out on that for a while, oh, but yeah. like you can, you can have, you know, text this keyword to my phone number and it could be as simple as you reply once, Hey, here's that thing. Here's a link to it. And now they're on your list. And that's great. And you can also get super deep into it where five days later they get a different text message or they also get an email or now they're added to uh, a Facebook custom audience and you can retarget them. You can go deep on it, which is really cool if if you want. And you can also keep it really simple. So that that's the tool that I've been messing around with. I know you have too. Um, and uh, I think we've got a, uh, a link where people can go check it out, right? Yeah. So if you text the word, and of course I'm going to call that call to action for, for, for what we're using here. If you text the word SMS to 647-277-5177, you're going to get the link to that tool, or you can also go to the golden voice podcast.com forward slash CC. So that's the golden voice podcast.com forward slash CC for crowd connect. And you're going to get a link uh, so that you can, you know, get access to the tool that we're using for SMS text marketing so that you can get started. So hey, it was awesome. What we preach. We, we, we <laughs> the part, exact we, same thing. We we're just talking about it. And now you're just doing it. So exactly. you, know, you know, we believe in it because this is what we do. Exactly. And some of y'all, you, you're listening to this new podcast episode because you got to text that link you back to it and so that you can tune in. But anyways, uh, yeah. Awesome, brother. It was great to uh, finally have you come in on the Golden Voice podcast. It was a super special guest because like I said, you're like a very good friend of mine. We, we basically brothers in the game and we're going to continue to grow and continue to build. We have some things that are coming up in the nearest future that are super exciting. And we're going to keep to, we're going to keep uh, sharing some value to the artist community, man. And that's what we're about. So I appreciate you coming on, sharing some of the, some of your value. And I'm pretty sure you're going to come back to share a little bit more. Oh man. The Any podcast. Anytime. And, and no, I appreciate you, bro. You've been, you know, a huge part of, um, you know, us building MIDI money together. And, and we, you know, like you said, we talk and give each other advice all the time. And um, so, yeah, no, I'm, I'm grateful to have the chance to be able to chat with you on the podcast and, and uh, to have you as a friend. So I appreciate you. Awesome. All right. So uh, make sure that you subscribe to the podcast that you follow from anywhere that you are tuning in, because we're going to come up with some more golden jib that's going to help you turn the talent that you have with your voice into gold. So this was Billy here in Big Shot Bees on the Golden Voice Podcast signing out. I'll talk to you on the next one.